Good day, everyone. Welcome to lecture number 33 of Theory of Competition. And in this particular lecture, we will continue the discussion of lecture number 32. So in lecture number 32, we were discussing about this particular language, LD, which is the language is L is equal to X, such that the Turing machine whose code is X does not accept X, does not accept X. Okay. We said that this particular language is not recursively enumerated. Okay. So this language is not recursively enumerated. Fine. Today we will be discussing about the language ATM. Okay. And the ATM language is the encoding of M comma W such that M is a Turing machine and M accepts W. Okay. So this is the language of universal Turing machine. So our universal Turing machine, it is like this. This is universal Turing machine. And it is taking two inputs. One is the string W and another is the Turing machine itself, some Turing machine. And it will accept if M accepts W. It will reject if M rejects rejects W. Okay. And it will go in loop if M goes in loop on W. Loop on W. Okay. So this is our universal. Turing machine, or we can say universal Turing machine simulates other Turing machines, other Turing machines. And today we have to discuss the language of this Turing machine, which is ATM, or it is also denoted by L. We are going to discuss about this language. Discuss about this language means we have to discuss whether it is recursive, whether it is recursively enumerable or whatever it is. First thing we know that ATM is recursively enumerable. Why it is recursively enumerable? We said that every language for which there exists a Turing machine, that language is recursively enumerable. Okay. So since here we have a Turing machine that accepts this particular language. So we have, so the reason for this is that we have a Turing machine. And what is that Turing machine? UTM, whose language is ATM, whose language is ATM or we can write LU. So this implies LU is recursively enumerated. Okay. So this we already know. This ATM is recursively enumerable. Now our aim is to see whether ATM is recursive. Okay. What does that mean? What does that mean? ATM is recursive. ATM is recursive means that there exists a Turing machine M 
or any let's suppose name is d there exists a turing machine that accepts atm and rejects all other all other strings and does not go in loop and does not go in loop in other words it is also called that if we are saying whether atm is recursive that means we are saying that atm is decided okay we have to prove whether atm is recursive okay but we will prove so the actual is atm is not recursive so the answer to this question is no okay atm is not recursive or we can say atm is not decidable okay or in other words we will say that atm is undecided so we have to prove this that atm is undecidable or we can say atm is not recursive atm is recursively enumerable but we will prove that atm is not recursive okay but before understanding this the proof of this particular statement you have to understand that there exists so you have to understand that there exists a turing machine whose code is x and it accepts x what does that mean we are saying that there is a turing machine and if it is code is x and if we give input x to this turing machine it accepts x okay it accepts x okay and if we give any other input it rejects it does not accept it does not Okay. or we can say it rejects that input fine so you have to remember this this particular thing what i am saying here that there exists a turing machine whose code is x and it accepts x so inverse of this was this ld x such that the turing machine whose code is x does not accept x this was not recursively enumerable but this language is a turing machine whose code is x and it accepts x okay so you have to keep this in mind and using this we will prove that atm is not recursive okay so let's do this what i am saying i am saying that a tm or you can say lu is not recursive recursive means that it does not halt on every input means that there are only two conditions accept or reject okay so let's prove this let's do the proof of this okay so let's assume let's assume lu is recursive so let's assume it is recursive okay. so when we are assuming it is recursive what does that mean it means it implies there exists exists a turing machine okay that accepts lu 
accepts l u and rejects all other inputs or you can say it does not go in loop let's name that turing machine as d okay so let's say d is a turing machine that accepts lu and rejects all other inputs or we can say it accepts lu or atm and halts on all inputs halts on all possible okay so this is our turing machine now let's make this turing machine how will it look this turing machine and we know what is this turing machine basically this turing machine is utm because utm is a turing machine that accepts lu so that means we have this utm this utm accepts what i am saying this utm accepts this language lu okay so that means there are only two inputs two outputs sorry either it is accept or it is reject there is no other output there won't be any loop and it takes two inputs one is the turing machine m and another is a string w okay so this is our general utm so but when we are saying that utm or we can say the language accepted by utm what is that language lu when we are saying that lu is recursive that means utm has only two outputs accept and reject that means utm halts on all possible inputs so that means it halts on all possible inputs okay so that this is our assumption when we are saying lu is recursive that means we are saying that utm halt us on all possible inputs or, or in other words we will say that it will give only two answers yes and no yes answer will be yes will be if m accepts w and no answer will be if m does not accept a w okay now let's see what we are going to do now this utm from this utm from this utm we will create create a new turing machine so let's see what kind of turing machine we are going to create from this utm so let's say this is our turing turing machine this one let's say the name of this turing machine is x okay what is this turing machine doing this particular turing machine if we give an input give an input it makes a copy of that input makes the copy of the input so it is easy to generate this turing machine that copy is its input that means if we give input as a it will make its copy so the output will be a and a 
or in other words if this is a turing machine so this is a turing machine so for example this is it is input tape okay so on this tape if we have this let's suppose input is let's say a b a so the job of this turing machine is that it will make the copy of this input it will make another copy a b a okay so that means output will be two copies a and a so this turing machine we can create this turing machine okay now let's connect this turing machine with this utm let's see what will happen so what is this turing machine x okay and what is it giving it is copying okay whatever the input is it is copying here so let's say this input is m it will make m and m okay and now let's give this to utm this is our utm and we have assumed that is this utm is recursive that means it has two outputs one output is yes yes if m accepts m m accepts it is own copy so it is output is no if m does not accept okay if m accepts m and its output is no if m does not accept it m. okay so this is the turing machine complete so this is the turing machine let's let's name this turing machine as d okay so this turing machine now let me create this turing machine here this d so what is the input to this d input is m and what is output output are two one output is yes if m accepts it is own encoding output is no if m does not accept it it is own encoding so let me create this turing machine here this d so internally this d has these two turing machines as subroutines one is the copying sub turing machine and another is utm so the input to this d is m okay output is yes yes means accept if m accepts it is own encoding that is m and output is no if m does not accept its own encoding that is okay so this is our turing machine this turing machine okay and this d is internally these two x and utm so it is made of x and utm fine now let's do one thing let's exchange this so let's make it as complement so let's have another turing machine that is doing the complement operation what does that mean complement means that if the output is yes the output will be no here likewise let's put this complement here also complement Okay, so if output is no, it will make it yes. Okay, now let's name this Turing machine. So this is also a Turing machine. This complete because we know that we can combine Turing machines. So let's name this Turing machine as F. Okay, now let me create this Turing machine F. So what is F? so this is f okay what is input to this f input is m 
and what is output output is no when is output no no is when this is there no if m accept is okay and output is yes yes minus accept okay is yes if m does not accept okay now let's take this turing machine f turing machine so what will be the language of this turing machine so language of this turing machine will be inputs that are accepted by f so what are the inputs accepted by f, f so accept is this one okay so that means it will accept those m those inputs such that if such that m is a turing machine so because it is binary and every binary string represents a turing machine so m is a turing machine and m does not accept its own encoding does not accept the m okay or in other words let me rewrite it here so f is a turing machine whose language is this so the language language of f is equal to m m is the encoding or we can write two ms okay m and m concatenating two ms such that m is a turing machine and m does not accept its own encoding what is its own encoding m or in other words we can write so uh, sorry sorry let me let me rub this so it is simply m such that m is a turing machine and m does not accept the x m or in other words we can write language of f is x such that x is a turing machine and x does not accept x if you will see that this is same as this particular language this ld ld is x such that the turing machine whose code is x does not accept x so this is same as ld x such that x is a turing machine and x does not accept its own encoding so this is same as ld so that means the language of this turing machine is what is the language of this turing machine ld so we have a turing machine so this is our turing machine whose language is ld so from this we will say so what we will we are going to say that we have a turing machine we have a turing machine f whose language whose language is ld so we have a turing machine whose language is ld this implies ld is recursively enumerable okay so ld is recursively enumerable fine but we have already proved that ld but we have proved we have proved that ld is not recursively enumerable so this implies there is a 
contradiction so if there is a contradiction that means our assumption is wrong so that means our assumption is wrong and what was our assumption our assumption was if you can see here our assumption was lu is recursive so that means when we are saying our assumption is wrong this implies that lu is is not recursive okay so we have proved this now let's see what we have done so far so we said that there are languages okay so these are the languages now the subset of this language is recursively enumerable so this is the subset which is recursively enumerable and outside this subset we have found one language that language is ld and this language is language but it is not recursively enumerable okay and we have another language that is lu and this language is recursively enumerable but it is not recursive so that means the subset of this recursively enumerable is recursive okay and outside this recursive there is lu so we have found one language that is lu okay now we said that this is recursive context free language is a subset of recursive language so first we said non deterministic context free language non deterministic context free language then inside the non deterministic context free language we have deterministic context free language so these are deterministic context free language okay inside deterministic context free language we have regular language okay inside regular language there is another subset that is the finite language finite language okay finite language are subset of regular language regular language is subset of deterministic context free language deterministic context free language subset of non deterministic context free language and non deterministic context free language is subset of recursive language recursive language is subset of recursively enumerable language and outside recursively enumerable language we have the language set and we also found one language that is not recursively enumerable and we also have found one language that is recursively enumerable but not recursive okay one important thing that will be your homework is that recursive languages are closed under complementation under complementation so this you have to prove so this will be your homework for lecture number 33 okay recursive languages are closed under complementation what does that mean it means if l is recursive is r then l complement is also recursive okay another thing that is the first thing the second thing that is your homework is that if l and l dash are recursively enumerable then l is recursive okay so this is the second thing from this theorem you will see that recursively enumerable language is not 
closed under complementations. So this is the third part you have to prove is not closed under complementation. This is another thing that you have to prove. So these are the three things that are the homework for this particular lecture. Okay. Now let's move to the another problem that is the halting problem. Okay. Halting problem. Let's discuss what is halting problem. So halting problem is saying that if M uh, or let me rewrite it, sorry. So halting problem is if we have a Turing machine M and it is, is given an input W does M halt on W. So this is the halting problem. So we have to say whether this halting problem is solvable. Solvable means whether it is a decidable or undecidable. Decidable means whether it is recursive. So when we are saying that the problem is decidable, that means there exists a program or we can say there exists an algorithm to solve the problem. Solve the problem. So this is a problem. So what is the problem? The problem is if we have a Turing machine M and it is given an input W, does M halt on W? Okay, we have to answer whether it is decidable or undecidable. Okay, so we already have a Turing machine that will say whether M accepts W. Okay, but we don't have a Turing machine that will say whether M halt on W. So let me repeat it. Let me say, so, Let's first devise this problem, this problem in terms of language, in terms of a language. So let us make this statement as a language. So how I will make it a language. So let's define a language halt. Halt is equal to M comma W such that M halts on W. You have to understand what is the meaning of halt. Halt means that either accept or reject. Not loop. So excluding the loop. So I can rewrite this problem in terms of a language. So halt is a language that is uh, that can be written as M comma W such that M halts on W. So if we have a Turing machine that has halt as a language, as a language, then halt is if we have a, have a Turing machine that has halt as a language, then halt is recursively enumerable. If that Turing machine is decider, 
okay then halt is recursive okay so we have this halt language if we are able to find a turing machine that is decider so what is a decider decider is a turing machine that halts on every possible input okay but a recognizer or we can say a recursively enumerable is a language of a turing machine which does not halt on every input it may halt on some inputs it may go in loop on some other inputs okay so we have to say about this halt language what is this whether it is r whether it is recursively enumerable or so we have to answer okay so we will uh, i will write the answer here the answer is halt is recursively enumerable but not recursive okay halt is recursively enumerable but not recursive so that means halt comes under this category so it will be here halt it is recursively enumerable but it is not recursive so how it is recursively enumerable so how halt is recursively enumerable okay so this is the first one the second one is r uh, halt is not recursive okay so these are the two things that we have to prove we will first prove that halt is recursively enumerable then we will prove that halt is not recursive so let's first prove halt is recursively enumerable so when we are saying that halt is recursively enumerable we will design a turing machine that accepts this language that has this as a language okay similarly we will prove for halt is not recursive so let's first start with the first one then we will go on with the second one so let's do the first thing that is halt is recursively enumerable okay so what is the halt here halt is a language so that represents the halting problem so halt is equal to so it is a language this particular language such that m halts on w so m is a turing machine that halts on w so i am saying that halt is recursively enumerable let's prove this how is halt recursively enumerable we will prove it we will prove it by designing a turing machine whose language language is halt so that means this this particular language is the language of turing machine so let me first design a turing machine so let's say this is a turing machine or uh, let's take utm utm is a universal turing machine what is utm doing utm takes two inputs m and the string this is the encoding of a turing machine and this is a string and what is the output the output of turing machine utm is this is except okay if m accepts w okay. reject if 
M rejects W and loop it goes on loop if M is in loop. Okay. So this is our universal Turing machine. So how many are there are the outputs? One, two, and three. And what is the input? M and W. Okay. Now from this Turing machine, so let's take this Turing machine. I will design a new Turing machine. Okay. So let's design a new Turing machine. So here is our new Turing machine. Let's name it D. Okay. And basically in D, what we are going to do, we are going to combine these two, this accept and reject as one. And we will say here, accept. Okay. And here we will say loop. Fine, because it is going in loop. Now from this, I can create a Turing machine. So this is simply connecting these two and giving the output. Okay. So this particular Turing machine will be, will be like this. It has two inputs. One is M and another is W. Okay. And output are also two. One is accept. Another is loop. Okay. Basically, this D will be this portion. This UTM plus combination of these two, combining these two together, forming a one output. Okay. So this Turing machine, it will say accept if M accepts w or m rejects w so because this output is the combination of these two so that means it gives accept if m accepts w or m rejects w and it goes in loop if m goes in loop on W. So that means this D will accept this D is a Turing machine. It will accept this encoding if M accepts W or M rejects W. Or in other words, we will say it will go in accept if M faults on W. Because halt means it goes in accept state or in reject state. So what will be the language of this D? So the language of this Turing machine D will be, it will be M comma W because language means those encodings which will go to the accept state. So what will be the accept if M halts on W? M halts on W. And you can see that this is the same language as halt. So we have found a Turing machine. So we have a Turing machine, have a Turing machine D such that language of D is halt. So that means this implies halt is recursively enumerable language. Okay. This part is done. So we have proved that halt is recursively enumerable. Fine. Now let's prove the second part. What was the second part? Second part was we were saying that Halt is not recursive. Okay, so this is the second thing, or we can say halt is not decided. 
fine let's prove this let's give a proof for this particular statement halt is not a recursive and how will we prove it we will prove it by contradiction so let's assume let's assume halt language is a recursive or we can say decidable so let me divide this screen and what is the halt so you have to keep this in mind what is the halt halt is this particular language m comma w such that m halts on w so since i am saying that assuming that halt is recursive okay halt is recursive what does that mean it implies there exists a turing machine which is a decider okay that accepts accepts halt and rejects all other inputs in other words never goes in loop so let's name that let's name that decider as decider as d so this is the decider and the language of this decider is language of this decider is halt so what does that mean so this particular decider so this d it is a turing machine that takes two inputs one is m and another is a string some string okay and the output is halt is accept or we can say yes if m halts on w halts on w and the output is reject reject we will say no if m does not halt on w all done okay if m does not halt on w so both these yes and no these are halt conditions because d is a decider so that means both these are halt okay now from this turing machine from this turing machine we will design a new turing machine so what we are going to design we are going to take this d okay so first we will take x what is x x is basically a copying turing machine copying turing machine means that if we give m to this it will give output two outputs one will be m and another will also be m the copy of this input okay now let's give this in output as input to d okay what is d d is a decider and output of decider again two one is yes if m halts on m and no if m does not halt on m does not halt on okay so let's name this particular the combination of these two as e so this turing machine is e so what is e doing let me make e here so e turing machine it takes input m okay and it gives yes so it has 
two outputs one is yes and another is no and yes is if m halts on if m halts on m and no is if m does not halt on m okay now let's do one thing let's add two epsilon transitions here this kind of so i am adding new new two states here so these are two states if you can see that this is going on loop okay so that means if m so what is here here was in this if m halts on m and this was if m does not halt on m so no will be when m goes in loop on m and yes will be if m halts on m now on this yes uh, connection i am making a loop epsilon transition loop so these are epsilon transition loops okay so that means if i take this turing machine this one let me make it this one so here output again is one is loop and another is no okay so let me name this entire portion as f so what is f now let me create f turing machine here so this is f turing machine what is the input to this f so the input to this f is m okay what is the output output is it will go in loop so loop if m halts on m okay and it will go to no if m does not halt on m. now let's do one thing let's give f because f is a turing machine okay so f is a turing machine let us give f as input to f okay let's give f as input to f so let us give this as input to f so whenever we are giving and input so this is input to what turing machine which turing machine f okay. so there are two conditions one is it will halt so f will halt on f okay. second is f will go in loop on f so these are the two conditions first and second let's take the first one so what is the first one so if uh, so we will say let's say f will halt on f okay so the first condition is f halts on f halts on f now let's give this f as input to this machine so because this is our f this one is our f let's give f as input to f so this is f what we are giving f so what will be the output the output will be whether it will go in loop or it will halt so when will it go in loop it will go in loop if m halts on m here we are saying f halts on f so that means this will go in loop 
okay here we are saying when f is given as input to f it will halt but actually when we are giving f as input to f we are going into loop why we are going into loop because f halts on f so that means there is a contradiction likewise you will see in case 2 as well in this second one in second one there is also contradiction try it on your own there is also contradiction so in both the cases there is contradiction when there is a contradiction that means this implies our assumption is wrong and what was our assumption our assumption was that halt is recursive so that means our assumption is wrong and what is the final output the output is that halt is not recursive or we can say not decided so there does not exist any algorithm to solve the halting problem okay so we have understood this particular part here so in this particular lecture we have done the following first is we find out that lu is not recursive or it is not decidable second we find out that halt is not recursive or we can say it is not decided these two we have proved now i will give examples of some other languages for example this particular language le is equal to m so this is the encoding of m such that language of m is equal to 5 this is one language another language is l n e is equal to m such that language of m is not equal to 5 okay another language is l of gamma is equal to m such that language of m is recursive and another language is l n r so this is r not gamma this is r sorry is equal to m such that language of m is not recursive so these are some special languages so you have to remember that this language this particular language is not recursively enumerated okay this particular language is recursively enumerable but not but not recursive okay this particular language is not recursively enumerable okay and this one is also not recursively enumerable okay so these are some of the important languages that you have to remember not only remember we will also prove these using rice's theorem so we have to understand what is rice's theorem and then after understanding the rice's th theorem we will prove these language so why this language is not recursively enumerable and likewise and this particular theorem will be the discussion of lecture number 34 okay. so let me stop this particular lecture and let's meet in the next lecture where we will be discussing about the rice's theorem till then goodbye